So hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to introduce uh, a new aspect of my uh, Facebook postings, which is my research update series as presentation. So you're getting plenty of research updates from me uh, in written version, but sometimes the topic deserves more attention and elaboration. And so uh, it's better done as uh, a PowerPoint. And my first offering for the research update series is olive oil and cancer. And I hope, like me, you'll find this both fascinating and highly useful. So olive oil, as well as containing, of course, the oil components, the lipids, it's a rich source of phenolic phytonutrients. And that's especially the case if it's the extra virgin olive oil, which is the one we should really use when we're not cooking olive oil, when we're having olive oil as such. So these phenolic phytonutrients uh, include tyrosol, hydroxytyrosol, oliuropine, and, and they're probably well known to herbal therapists because they're what occur also in olive leaf extract, but less so in the leaf extract. In fact, I'm not sure if it's there at all, but, but certainly in the virgin pressed oil, you have these other compounds that are related called oleacin and particularly oleocanthal. And they're of quite interest, good interest as well. So as I'll show you on the next two slides, they are chemically related, and I'm, um, you know, and and uh, spoiler alert, I'm going to talk uh, chemistry. So hopefully you'll bear with me; it won't be too painful. In fact, I think you'll find it quite useful. So, uh, oleuropine found in both the olive fruits and the leaves. It's chemically what we call a seco iridoid, and that relates to uh, this structure here. And it's got a sugar on it. Uh, we see it with all the OHs there, so it's a glycoside. And it's not stable, and depending on how it decomposes, it can decompose to this compound these two groups of compounds. That's their generic uh, structure there. R is the variable. And it's oleacin and oleocanthal is what it can degrade to, especially, I think, in the oil, as I say, and not so much, I think, in the olive leaves. Now, these are all phenolic. So where's the phenol part, the phenolic part? Well, that's a benzene ring with hydroxy groups. So oleuropane has two, so it's a polyphenolic, but, but oleocanthal only has one, so it's just a phenolic. Now, the really interesting thing about the structure of oleocanthal is it has two aldehydic groups. These CH double bond O groups you can see there are what's known as aldehydes. So it's a dialdehyde, and um, that makes it highly reactive. And uh, what you will perceive uh, when you ingest oleocanthal is it will burn in your mouth and your mucous membrane. So there's kind of slightly sort of sticking, pungent aspect that a good virgin pressed olive oil can have is due to both the oleacin and the oleocanthal. Now, the other decomposition products of oleuropine, as mentioned, are hydroxytyrosol and tyrosol. And they, they tend to be more what you get in an olive leaf liquid extract, although they also do occur in the virgin pressed olive oil. Now, these olive oil phenolic compounds have attracted quite a bit of research as having favorable effects on cancer cells. Now, admittedly, most of this research is test tube research, but you'll see an abundant uh, suggestion of pathways like um, reducing invasion, slowing down cell cycle pro progression, encouraging healthy uh, uh, or normal uh, cell death in the cancer cells, reducing proliferation and migration, 
and various sort of uh, infl influence on uh, a characteristic cancer uh, pathways. Um, and, and certainly uh, from uh, animal models, you'll see lowering inflammation. Um, I think the survival arrow is the wrong way. It should be up, uh, lowering angiogenesis and lowering metastasis. Um, so that's all very well. There are plenty of plant compounds that show activity in the test tube against cancer cells or even in animal models, but it's no big deal. It doesn't mean you can go out and start taking them and get rid of cancer. And by no means will that work for a range of reasons, which I won't go into now. But here's where it gets interesting. The oleocanthal is thought to have a rather unique mechanism for attacking cancer cells. And the beauty of how the oleocanthal seems to work is that it's very selective on cancer cells. And it does so by attacking the lysosomal membranes. So, so inside a cell, you have uh, structures called lysosomes, and they have various functions in the cell. And if you disrupt the membranes of those lysosomes, you can kill the cell. Um, and what they found was the, the oleocanthal quite happily ruptured the lysosomes in cancer cells, but normal cells were completely unharmed. And I'll read from, from what it says. It says, because of oleocanthals, uh, as a typo there, targeted damage to cancer cells, it may prove an ideal option for therapeutic cancer treatment. The mechanism of killing cancer cells and sparing healthy cells, lysosomal membrane permeabilization, has been hypothesized as a possible me mechanism of effectively killing cancer cells, but has never been realized before. And I read that back in 2015, and I thought, Ah, this is something worthy of further attention. And so we come now to uh, this study, which was from a decade ago and indeed preceded that oleocanthal study. And it was done in Greece. And what they showed was that compared with the lowest and highest category of olive oil consumption, there was a lower risk of cancer. Now, they use this funny measure of log odds ratio, and, and you can't see from that exactly what the degree of risk reduction is, but it's about a third. So any type of cancer, your risk was reduced by a third lowest versus highest olive oil consumption. In these epidemiological studies, they tend to divide people into three or four groups according to consumption. So you'll have low, um, low, medium, medium and high, for example. So low versus high, about a third of a reduction in cancer incidence. And uh, looking at specific cancers, Digestive cancers and breast cancers, still around about a third reduction. And this was irrespective of the country of origin of the olive oil. So quite interesting tie-in, isn't it, with what was discovered about oleocanthal. But it gets even better because uh, the Greeks have come back and uh, at least one of the authors, uh, but it is a Greek study, and refreshed that now quite recently. So with 2021, so decades more information, and it's still standing up. And look at the numbers involved. 45 studies, 37 case control, and eight were cohort studies. They're types of epidemiological studies. Um, and look at the numbers involved. And for the cohort studies, they were looking at nearly a million people and following them, but over 45 studies. And again, highest olive oil consumption was associated with a 31% lower likelihood of any cancer. That's a risk ratio of 0.69. 
So 1 minus 6, 9, 0.69 is 0.31 equals 31%. Uh, 33% reduction in breast cancer, 23% uh, reduction in uh, gastrointestinal cancers, 26% reduction in upper aero digestive cancers, whatever that is. <laughs> And look, urinary tract cancers were more than halved. And that might not be just a random finding because if you ingest things like oleocanthal, you'll tend to pass their metabolites out in your urine and you could be getting beneficial anti-cancer effects concentrated in your urine. So that might explain the 54% the, uh, reduction for urinary tract cancers. So that's cancer prevention, but... What about therapy? Well, quite interesting is this study, which looked at the effect of dietary intervention, and they specifically chose, based on the research and this selective activity of oleocanthal on, on cancer cells and sparing healthy cells, um, and oleacine, which is the related compound, so the two together, they used a high oleocanthal oleacine uh, olive oil in patients with early stage CLL. It was a pilot randomized trial. They took 40 mil a day of unheated, unprocessed extra virgin olive oil with that high level of those two important phytonutrients. And what they saw uh, was a decrease in both white blood cell count and lymphocyte count. So that is an actual therapeutic outcome in a cancer, admittedly a slow cancer, but a cancer none nonetheless, CLL. Also, when they looked at markers of uh, healthy cell death, normal cell death, which is apoptosis, they found that that was, they were increased. So that's... Um, uh, the CCK18, the APO1, FAS, and Survivin. So there was, um, if you like, a tendency for the cancer cells to die a natural death rather than continue to multiply. And also in terms of replication, because we know cancer cells replicate very quickly, the, the marker cyclin D showed that there was less proliferation among the cancer cells. And one of the beauties of this study is it gives us information about how much to take. If we're serious about reducing our risk of getting cancer, as per the Greek epidemiological uh, uh, reviews of all the published studies, um, how much olive oil do we take? Well, they used 40 mil a day and it was therapeutic, so preventative, maybe half that dose, maybe 40 mil if you if you want to go there, but of a high oleocanthal oleacin olive oil. Now, there are companies selling those now. They are a little bit expensive, but you can do the test yourself because remember I said the oleocanthal and the oleacin will have a bit of a, or ole, oleacin, sorry, will have a bit of a burning uh, sensation on the back of your throat when you have it. So the more that is, the more they contain. And of course, you're not going to cook it. You're just going to have it straight as as per this study. Um, now, the other thing to note is that, as I said, the dialdehydes, they're quite reactive. Uh, and this was uh, highlighted in um, a, a, a study uh, where they looked at, uh, if we have a look, uh, particularly up top right here, the oleocanthal. So you see it was done from December 2019 to March 2021, so around 16 months. And it, it was either the blue stored at four degrees in the dark, so basically in a fridge, whereas the other one uh, stored at room temperature out on a bench or, you know, with a bit of light around. And you can see the red, the normal storage, the oleocanthal rapidly decomposes to the point uh, in less than a year later, there's absolutely none at all left. Uh, 
Whereas if you look at storage four degrees C and in dark, in other words, the fridge, there was still a decay, but it was pretty good for about eight months. So if you're going to uh, pay the extra dollar and go for a high oleocanthal olive oil, and sometimes that's reflected out or advertised as a high phenolic content, extra virgin olive oil, um, and, and you're going to take it every day as part of a health regime, including cancer prevention, you know, have it as, having it as straight oil, maybe mixed in as a salad dressing or however you can think to take it, store it in the fridge because then you won't be wasting your money. So thank you. I thought I'd share these fascinating research findings with you regarding extra virgin olive oil and, uh, and uh, um, he's hoping there'll be more research on this topic.